Oh yes, so welcome into this Photoshop in 30 seconds tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com where we cover every tool feature function, all kinds of tips and tricks in Photoshop in about 30 seconds. It usually ends up being more like five four or five minutes, something like that. But today we're going to talk about a very important tool. So yesterday's tool, we covered the sponge tool here, which I said is one of the tools that I never use in Photoshop. Today we're going to talk about the pen tool, and this is one of the most important most rich function and feature filled tools in Photoshop, an extremely useful tool in Photoshop that you absolutely need to know how to use. In fact, this is going to be one of a four or five part tutorial that's going to span over a few days here. Let's talk about the pen tool. So obviously you select the pen tool, you have some options here, a free form pen tool, add and delete anchor point tool and a convert point tool. We're going to get back to that stuff later. I guess we can talk about free form pen tool. Free form pen tool, you just click and drag and boom, you draw out a path. You can see it's all all these different anchor points and little bits of path connecting them. And if we go to our paths panel, we have one giant work path. I can select that path, hit the delete key, get rid of it. I don't usually use the freeform pen tool. We're not going to spend much time talking about it. Let's go to the real pen tool. The pen tool allows you to either create a shape, which if I just click out and make some sort of boxy shape here, you can see that I have a shape and I have no fill currently set to it, but I have a two pixel or two point stroke, I should say. I can increase the stroke, you know, 18 and a half. I can give it a fill of like uh, orange. And you can see we have an orange box with a green stroke. And you can see this has made a new shape layer over here in our layers panel. I can edit the fill of this uh, layer by just, you know, holding down my alt or option key and hitting the delete key. And boom, it gives me a new fill color and that fills with the foreground color just like that. Or I can fill with the background color by doing command delete um, or that be command or control backspace excuse me on the PC or alt backspace on the PC for your foreground color let's delete that shape I don't want to talk about shapes necessarily right now I just want to show you that they're possible let's talk about drawing with a path I like to usually work with the paths because I like to use the pen tool to create ex very exact selections that I can go back and edit and tweak and adjust that's one of the beauties of drawing a path or using the pen tool to create a selection as you can always go back and edit it later it, the paths are vector so you can scale the selection up as big as you ever want scale it down as small as you ever want that's great you can make it interact with other paths and cut pieces off and interact join different pieces merge pieces together all kinds of things like that and you can quickly load a path as a selection by the way if we just draw a path right like this the hotkey to quickly load it as a selection command return that'd be control enter on uh, the PC. I'm going to undo that, however. I'm going to get rid of that path. Let's talk about how to draw a path. So I'm working with path. Um, and by the way, when you draw a shape, I feel like I'm going in a thousand different directions already. When you draw a shape, you are still drawing a path but it's just automatically being assigned a fill and a stroke and you've got different properties associated with that. When you draw a path, you can always convert the path to a shape. See right here, this is saying make a shape layer out of my path. You can also convert it to a vector mask or just make it, you know, load it as a selection, which, you know, as we covered, we covered the hotkey for it. So here's how you make a path in Photoshop. Click once, you drop an anchor point and you can see where the path is going to go. Um, well, I can see where the path is going to go because underneath the cog wheel here, I turned on rubber band. That allows you to see where you're dropping a point. I'm going to hold down my shift key. That's going to give me a perfectly straight up and down point. Hold down my shift key, give me a perfectly straight across point. Hold down my shift key again, straight up and down. Hold. I'm not going to hold down my shift key. I'm just going to move over, hover over the opening anchor point, click once. It's going to join my path, and I now have a path. Go to the paths panel. Boom, I have a work path. If I want to save the work path, double click on it, and I'll just name this box. So now we have our work path saved. Great. We can duplicate this path by just dragging it down to the new path uh, button down here, the new path icon, I should say. You can get rid of the path, just hit the delete key. Uh-oh, we got rid of our path. We want to drag the whole thing to the garbage. Where did our other original path go? Well, it's not selected. We can select it by just choosing it in the paths panel. And this actually brings up something that I should cover real quick. Sometimes when you're working with paths, you're still going to see the path left on your layer. There's no, uh, there's nothing that's been added to this layer in terms of pixels. If we export this image and post it on Facebook, you're not going to see a box on top of your image. This is just a path. This is kind of like Photoshop stuff inside of Photoshop. You can make that box go away, though, if you need the peace of mind by going into the paths panel and just clicking anywhere to make that box disappear. So that's that. Now, I should also mention kind of a cool little thing. Um, you can save a path not only inside of a PSD file, but inside of a TIFF, uh, a JPEG, an EPS file, uh, a, a PDF file, saving out of Photoshop. Now, if you save for the web, it doesn't preserve your paths, but if you just go like File, Save As, you can actually save all of your paths if you have a bunch of selections or shapes or something that you want to keep intact. You can do all that within a JPEG. JPEG file, not shape layers, but just the stuff here in the paths panel. So that's something that's interesting to note as well. 
Now, probably the last thing I want to cover for the part one of this tutorial, so we understand how to draw a basic path, right? Let's go back and select our path. Let's say we're working with this path, um, and I'm going to grab my direct selection tool. That's the black path selection tool, I guess, actually, not the direct selection tool. With the path selection tool, you can select an entire path. So we select this path. Let's go back to the pen tool. Now, let's say we want to make more of a house shape out of this, so we need to place a point here in the top center. Um, uh, whoops! I say I went to the regular move, uh, the regular move tool, which you obviously can't move a path with that, as we just saw. So you need the path selection tool. We're going to move that down just a little bit. Let's go back to the pen tool here now that we've been delayed. I want to. I need to add an anchor point right here. Now you can see when I hover over my path, automatically I get that little plus icon next to the pen tool. That's going to say, "Hey, look! You can add an anchor point." That essentially does exactly what add anchor point tool does. Delete anchor point. Kind of works the same way with this tool. You hover over an existing anchor point, you get the minus key, boom, you get rid of that, that anchor point. I don't want to do that. I do want to add an anchor point right here. The reason it's allowing me to do this is because I have auto add delete checked on. If I shut that off, when I hover over my path, I get nothing. So I'm, I like to leave that checked on because it, it means I don't have to go digging through here and go, oh, add anchor point tool. I can quickly add an anchor point if I need one. Then you would, you know, go over to your direct selection tool because the direct selection tool you can select individual points in a path, and I drag this up to make more of a house shape. Now the roof isn't very pointed, and this brings us to the very last part of this first step of the tutorial, which is the whoop, over here the convert point tool. So the convert point tool allows you to hover over and select any anchor point that you currently have, click and just drag out what are called tangent handles. The tangent handles are a way of controlling the curve of the path. So you can see I can take what was a nice sharp point down here and make it a big bulbous corner. Well, that's not very house shaped. Well, I can get rid of a curve on a path by just clicking on the anchor point with the convert uh, anchor tool. So boom, right back to a perfect point. And the same goes for this up here. I can get rid of that curve by just clicking once on that anchor point and it gives me a nice straight edged roof for my little house shape. So for part one of the very deep and very functional pen tool in Photoshop, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.